Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Upkick MMA episode 421. I am Brendan. All right, UFC Fight Night Burns vs. Brady prelims. This is going to be Rongju versus Padilla. That's going to be the start of this one. We're going to cover all the rest of the prelims on here, go over all the fights, break them down round by round. If you like this kind of thing, subscribe to the channel. That way, the next video is coming out. I'd appreciate it. And if you do like the video, hit the like button. All right, let's get right into the fights. There's a lot of them. Chris Padilla versus Rongju. Okay, well. As the stats start to pull up, Xfinity says internet fast. I disagree. Um, as you landing some low kicks early, Padilla going back at him with his own low kicks. Uh, Padilla has a snappy jab, but the just the distance wasn't there for him. Right, he was trying to manage this stuff. Yeah. By the way, this, these prelims put them on in the background. There were some fun fights. There were some good stuff to watch. Uh, I don't know if I'd watch them straight through unless you're a hardcore fan, which like I always say, you've probably already watched them. Uh, Padilla, like he wasn't, he was using his jab as a measuring stick, but he was out of range for a lot of it. It took him a while to get his range. Still a lot of distance management from both guys uh, with Jude kind of taking the center uh, more often. Padilla with the low, Padilla's low kicks are starting to add up. I even thought he might be out ahead, um, even though he was on the back foot for most of this first round. Any big shot down the stretch would make the difference. Neither guy really landed one, but he had pulled out in front in the second half of this round, in my opinion. If you look at the striking numbers here, that kind of tells the story. 35 to, 20, uh, to 27 in favor of Padilla. A lot of people were saying, I thought it was a relatively close round, but a lot of people were like, oh, Rongju, Rongju won this round 10-9. I don't think so. I think Padilla won this one. Uh, both guys going low kicks, Padilla getting knocked off balance. Um, both guys swinging big Padilla with the clinch and then uh, Zhu landing five hooks to the body after they get in the clinch. Uh, you know, they were every time they would get in, they would get uh, uh, get real scrappy, but then they would go to a lot of dead time. Big right hand from Padilla, then Zhu landing landing back. These guys are both really landing well when they open up. Like I said, um, this, lots of standing and then chaos. Uh, Padilla with the step in elbow right to the eye. Zhu thought it was an eye poke, but it was a beautiful elbow that that uh, ended up blowing up the eye significantly. He couldn't see out of it. The doctor steps in. I am so glad they stopped this fight. It, it was not. Th there was no reason for it to carry on. Um, like the guy had one eye. I'm not. Listen, I know it's disappointing to end a fight like that, and you never want to see a guy lose because of an injury, which is technically what this is, but it was caused by the elbow. It was a direct, <clears throat> it was um, caused directly by an action taken by, by Padilla. I, as much as I don't like the way that those end, you got to get, you got to give it to him, man. It was a beautiful step in elbow. I am curious as to see where the judges went. Um, Tony Weeks and Jacob Montalvo both gave the first round of Padilla, whereas Rick Winter saw it for Rongshu. Uh, again, don't think so. All right. <clears throat> Isaac Dalgarian taking on uh, Brendan Moore. Now, this fight... <laughs> I, I know that... Uh, or not Brendan Moore, Brendan Marot. Um <laughs> This fight started with Dolgarian running across the cage looking for the takedown and Marot's just freaking ah, trying to swing and stop it from happening. But no, immediately gets taken down. Dolgarian right to the mount, takes the back. And that's the whole round. Four minutes and 57 seconds of control time for him. 39 to 2 for significant strikes. 57 to 9 for total strikes. Just one-way traffic. I had this at 10-8. If you don't have it at 10-8, I don't know what a 10-8 is. Second round, Delgarian again runs right across, and then Marot tries to do the Jorge Masvidal step in flying knee. No dice, gets slammed down to the ground, uh, stays down there, gets stuck down there for four minutes and fifteen seconds until he um, kind of he has to tap to the arm triangle. Delgarian just looked unstoppable, looked on another level, uh, rightfully so. He was the big favorite to win this one. Uh, beautiful performance by him. Uh, Felipe Dos Santos versus Andre Lima. Slappy, slappy, lappy. Slappy fight. You're like, how is it sloppy? Oh, well, when there's three or four fouls, uh, people grabbing cages, doing the same shit they always do, kind of gets annoying. All right. Dos Santos with a really good jab, lead hook, going low with the kicks. And Lima looking to set up that left straight. And it lands it and then gets poked in the eye immediately after that, right? So you're like, okay, shit, there's a, there's a, there's a warning. 
Should be a point deduction. Uh, Lima, much more deliberate with his movements, right? So he's very deliberate, very plotting with his movements. And Dos Santos is very frenetic and throwing more. Uh, Dos Santos gets under the shot with the body lock, tries to lift, but Lima grabs the fence hard, just like he he stopped the he stopped the takedown. Essentially, he did this in the first, in his last fight, and that's why the guy bit him. <clears throat> Not saying that's okay. You can't fucking bite people. That's absolutely horrendous. But the guy did grab uh, Lima did grab the fence multiple times in his last fight, so it's clearly a pattern for him. This is like a John Jones eye poke. You kind of should you should know it's coming. I think that going forward, if Lima grabs the fence one time, there's a there should be a point deduction and immediate positional loss. So, uh, you know, if you show a history of committing this foul, uh, a certain foul, you should be penalized for it going forward. And I know you say like, well, each fight is its own entity, but that doesn't matter. You have a history of repeated um, infractions. So you're going to be punished accordingly. Uh, Dos Santos gets him down, but then they get right back up. Dos Santos landed more damage in this round. Uh, some people are saying Lima won this round. Absolutely not. Uh, he got outstruck 25 to 10. This is Dos Santos's round. I mean, the control time was minimal on either side. You know, the, it's a wash. Um, clearly, Dos Santos is round for me. I, the, so anybody, like the commentary team talking about how good Lima was doing. I don't know what the hell was going on with that. Dos Santos is finding the mark with that second and third shot and the overhands, the flying knees in tight, spinning elbows, landing more damage as Lila, uh, Lila. Lima slowly pressures in. Lima gets the body lock takedown right to mount and has a ton of control time in this round. Four minutes and six seconds, but that wasn't all on the ground, but it was a significant portion of it. Uh, the striking numbers were so close, eight to six. Do I think that Santos did more damage on the feet before they went down? Yes. Do I think Lima did enough on the ground with the added additive damage to make up for those two strikes that he um, was down on the significant strikes? I do. So I gave the second round to Lima. No arguments there. Uh, 1919. Seems to be a weird stoppage where Lima's trying to use a ref shirt to blow his nose. I thought he was trying to wipe his eye. We all thought he had an eye poke or something, but nope. He wanted to blow his nose. Fucking weird. Dos Santos trying to keep him away, but can't get enough space, gets taken down, and then Lima gets right to the back and then rides out the rest of the round on the back. Uh, the back. Good good fight for him. Um, looking at the scorecards here, uh, Chris Lee wasn't paying attention, gave that first round to Lima. Uh, Janitra Camillo and Adelaide Bird, of all people, uh, scored this one correct. Like I said, man, uh, there are so many of these uh, of these judges who, you know, they'll get the overall right winner and nobody will talk about it, right? The, the guy who rightfully won the fight gets the win on their scorecard, even though their scorecard's complete ass. And nobody's going to talk about it. Nobody's going to go back here afterwards and look at who scored it for who. Um, so whatever. Not whatever. It's horrible. And it should be addressed. Um, these commissions are just absolutely ridiculous with who they let judge these fights. Gabriel Santos versus Yi Zha. I thought this one was going to go different as the fight went on, but uh, Santos was able to keep it up. Both guys trading kicks. Santos has some more sting on his, in my opinion. Hard lead hook from Santos as he, uh, as Ja comes in. Um, it, he staggered him multiple times in this. Ja is missing a lot in his entries and leaving openings because he's staying in there. And he's he's hurt his own foot. He hurt his own foot multiple times kicking. Uh, Santos just finding the mark. And holy shit, with the front kick to the face, drops him. Unloading, but Ja gets back up. He's a tough son of a bitch, that dude. Uh, Santos hurt him to the body with a kick after Yija hurts his foot again. This was a 10-8 round. Uh, Santos, 46-23 to 23 for striking numbers. Hurt him multiple times. Got near to a finish. Can't can't go anywhere but a 10-8. Uh, Santos landing that front kick to the face again. Yija pushes through it and landing some hands, but just can't keep Santos off of him. Maybe Santos will slow a little, which is what I thought would happen. He, he did. His output did wane slightly, but... You know, Santos just gets the takedown. Yija able to get back up after the take after taking some shots. After about a minute, the ref stops it for a doctor uh, doctor to come and look at the cut. Santos kicks him in the nuts hard. Yija says, "No, don't worry about it." And then they, we move on. Uh, so, you know, whatever. I have it 20 to 18. Uh, I think Santos won this round as well. It was a closer round with the striking numbers being in favor of uh, Santos at still 19 to 15. Plus he had the, the grappling control and the damage. So no argument there. Uh, easily 2018. Last round, Santos landing three great punch combo. Yija yells at him, and then Santo wants to avoid the pressure and gets a takedown. Very smart move. Not the most interesting fight to watch in this last round with four minutes of control time where he's on top of him. Not a lot of striking here, 11 to 3. 
Um, but he he rides the back the whole round, 30 to 27. Good, good, smart fight for him. All right, a little bit of controversy in this one, and I hope somebody talks about it other than me because it's just me yelling into the darkness. Uh, Jacques Molini Amarim versus Vanessa Demopoulos. Now, again, like I said in my main my main video, I don't have a horse in this race either. I'm not the biggest fan of either one of these fighters. And it's not that I dislike them. I, I, I just don't have an opinion, right? Okay, so Jacqueline Amarim um, fighting through the knee, knee to the face to get the takedown. She absolutely gets the takedown, does that, gets on top. She's, a bet, she's dominating on the ground, getting the back with a smooth back take. She looked fantastic. Then Amarim grabs the inside of the glove, right? Just like this. Sorry. Right? I will show you pictures. So she grabs the inside of the glove. Demopolis is yelling at the referee, who I believe was Jacob Montalvo. It was. And he's yelling at him. Er, she's yelling at him. She goes, she's grabbing the inside of my glove. She's grabbing the inside of my glove, yelling multiple times. Uh, Montalvo looks at it and does nothing about it, doesn't address it. And then uh, she transitions to the arm bar and gets the finish. That is complete bullshit. The glove, the glove, the hand in the glove led directly to the positional change and it led directly to the submission. For proof, I bring pictures. She, Amarim, after this said, I did not grab inside the glove. It looked like I grabbed the glove, but I grabbed her wrist. She's like, oh, when you grab like this, it looks like you're grabbing inside the glove. I have never been able to control anybody's hand. Grab, grab someone's hand like this, okay, with the thumb on the side and grab grab right here because we can't even do the what she's actually doing but you grab like this and you tell me you're going to hold on to someone's hand i don't even care if there's a glove there there is this is not a, an effective grip you want to be here right you want to be on the wrist you want wrist control she does not have her wrist she has the base of the thumb and then the 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 glove that's how she's controlling it this position here this Okay, look at my fingers. There is no, no way she can hold on to a hand like that. And you're like, oh, maybe it was momentary. Nope. Grabs in it. She continues to pull on it, gets deeper into the glove. And now the thumb is even further down the hand. That's, that, that's as blatant of a, gl a glove grab as you're going to get. And the, the referee was notified about it by the fighter stared right at it and then came to her afterwards after she was complaining about it after the loss the, the loss and then told her no no the hand was around your wrist i was looking at it well if you're look if you're looking at it one you don't know what you're looking for or there could be corruption you want to go throw corruption out there you, you want you want amarim to win which would be the worst case scenario i don't think that's what it is i think it's fucking incompetence does he grapple does he know what he's looking for? Because I've never seen in a jujitsu competition anybody been able to grab someone like this, like this, and hold someone's hand before. Amarim thinks it's possible. She says, oh, yeah, we do that all the time. And then Biz and, and all the commentary team uh, just shucks it off like, oh, no big deal. Waves this away. It's bullshit. This is bullshit. Like, this, you can't do this shit, man. Like, how, how... How can you argue anything other than this is a glove grab? A glove grab. This should be investigated. They should go back afterwards and, t and, and take away the win. They should make it a no contest. It was a bad decision by the referee in the moment. And you can talk about the stress of all the other things and blah, blah, blah. And they have to make a, a split, split moment decision. He had multiple, time, multiple chances to look, at that, to look at that wrist grab. The supposed wrist grab. Absolute bullshit. Absolute bullshit. I feel for Demopolis, and she complained about it afterwards. You got to defend it. I understand that stuff. You know, you, you can't just complain to the referee. You have to defend yourself at all times. But, you know, if someone's kicking you in the nuts repeatedly and you're just like, you're in pain from a nut kick or someone pokes you in the eye multiple times and you're, you can't see, like, yeah, you can defend yourself, but you're compromised. If someone's grabbing inside your glove, you cannot get rid of their fingers. You, there's nothing you can do to break that, especially if your other hand is trapped. What are, how, how am I supposed to get my wrist free? Fuck, that was annoying. Horrible. Please, somebody talk about that. All right, Dylan Budka versus Andre Petrosky. Um, 
we can we can speed run this one. Budka missed weight by cra like crazy, by the way, like two and a half pounds. Um, Petrovsky keeps the pressure on, forcing Budka to sort a sort. Uh, circle on the outside. Not a whole lot of striking. Eight to four in this first round. Really, the story was Petrovsky eventually gets a takedown, stays on top for the rest of the round. Two minutes and 46 seconds of that. Second round, same exact thing. Uh, three minutes and 47 seconds of control time. Last round, another round of control for uh, Petrovsky. I could break down all of the positional stuff and the way he's able to keep pressure, but there was not a lot of positional movement once he got on top. It was a lot of control time, um, not a lot to break down. Uh, Nathan Fletcher versus Zygamantis Ramashka. All right. First round, they trade straights. Uh, immediately to start the fight, Rashka getting the better of that one. So Fletcher looks for the single leg, takes a bunch of elbows for, before he gets on top. Ramashka reverses it, gets on top gets slammed but then and then reverses it again using the front headlock to get back up. Ramashka using a reverse uh inverted triangle. I think it was a reverse inverted triangle. Yeah, and he's got it over the face. So the triangle the the leg wasn't around the neck. It was actually around uh the face here and turns into kind of like a neck crank, just a really painful position, uh like a face squish almost. It's uh it sucks cuz you know, it wasn't even a neck crank because his neck wasn't being, you know, Move, cranked, <laughs> moved to the left or the right. It was really just a face smash. And um, it's a legitimate submission attempt. Um, pretty uh, pr pretty low success rate on those would be my guess. But he throws the body triangle on him with the arms and he's really trying to squeeze him. Um, it just, you know, couldn't get Fletcher to tap from the pain. Uh, Fletcher uses that right hand entry to get the takedown, works his way to mount and land some damage to end the round. Really close round here. So, uh, Fletcher outstruck him 13 to six. I feel like the bigger shots came from Amashka early. Um, the control time on the ground went to Fletcher, but I feel like he was in more danger more often and he was being forced to react more to Ramashka. So I ended up giving this first round to Ramashka. If you gave it to Fletcher, I think that's okay. Cause this is a lot of, uh, um, this is very hard to compare the two things that were going on. They weren't going one for one on the feet, and then the ground control time was different, and the strikes on the ground weren't as impactful for Fletcher. Um, and how much credit do you give to that triangle attempt and the other some like um it, it it really turns into like a what what are you preferring here? Which one do you think was closer to end who do you think was closer to winning winning this round? Or sorry, ending the fight in this round. And I would have to say Ramashka was closer to ending the fight in this first round. Do I, th was it by a lot? No. So I, I gave him this round. Second round, Fletcher using that body lock, slams him to the ground, gets into mount and gets the arm triangle. Great finish. So the, the scorecards d don't matter, but let's look at them. Yeah, th this is, makes sense. All right, so Dimitro Camillo and Tony Weeks both gave that first round to Ramashka and then Brian Minner gave that first round to Fletcher. Not the biggest fan of any of those guys, to be honest, but um, those aren't bad scorecards. That's fine. Um, that's it. That's it. I'm glad to be back. Um, let, let me know what you guys thought about the fights. Let me know if you think that uh, glove grab should be legal. Um, I appreciate y'all for stopping by. Subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of thing. That way you know the next video is coming out. Uh, hit the like button if you did like this video. Have an amazing week. Love y'all. Peace.